It's that time again. This is Katney with your weekly Python on Hardware News. Every week, we put together the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. It is available through adafruitdaily.com. Head over to sign up and see all of the past and current newsletters, or tune in each week to hear what's going on. This week, Adafruit began the process of removing loaded language from code, documentation, and Adafruit learn guides. As our code of conduct states, we strive to use welcoming and inclusive language. Whether it is in documentation or in code, the words we use matter. This means we disfavor language that, due to historical and social context, can make community members and potential community members feel unwelcome. The terms master and slave have been replaced with terms like main and secondary, or microcontroller and sensor. The terms blacklist and whitelist have been replaced with deny list and allow list. We will continue to address this until the process is completed as a part of our continued efforts to fight against racism and inequality. For more information and a list of regularly updated resources, visit adafruit.com slash Black Lives Matter. The Python Software Foundation stated this month, the time for silence is long past. The Python Software Foundation stands in solidarity with the Black community. Black Lives Matter. The Python community has a long history of inclusion and support. See the post by the PSF on Twitter. Chrome developer Una Kravitz asked GitHub to follow Google in its move to use the term main instead of master for the default branch in GitHub last week. GitHub CEO Nat Friedman answered promptly on June 12th, revealing that the company was already working on the issue. GitHub lending its backing to this movement effectively ensures the term will be removed across millions of projects. Adafruit is working with the team to open safely as New York City begins to lift COVID-19 restrictions. We continue to follow the same safety protocols we have been since the beginning, and will continue to do so. At this time, regular non-COVID-related orders are shipping, but expect delays as we are still at a limited capacity. As manufacturing was interrupted, some items may be out of stock. Please look to Adafruit resellers to obtain these items more quickly. In the U.S., DigiKey is suggested. Visit adafruit.com slash opensafely for details. CircuitPython 5.4.0 Beta 1 has been released. This release adds basic lower power support when in time.sleep. The lower power work changed timekeeping and may have introduced bugs. Please continue to use 5.3.0 if you need a stable version of CircuitPython. New features and improvements since the last release include ESP32-S2 support, the new Count.io module, the new Vector.io module, native module docs are now Python stubs, a lengthy list of bug fixes, two new translations, and various translation updates. To try it out, visit circuitpython.org downloads and download the latest unstable version for your board. This week, from the desk of Lady Ada, CircuitPython Bluetooth BLE library support is now available for desktop Python. Lady Ada has been trying out the new BLE CircuitPython library support for desktop. Having easy cross-platform Python support for wireless BLE has been a challenge for many years. Thanks to Dan Halbert's great work on the CircuitPython BLEIO and Python Bleak library, we now have many Adafruit CircuitPython BLE examples working on desktop Python. Finally, heart rate monitors, bike cadence sensors, thermometers, and more can be connected to Python. More available on the Adafruit YouTube or the Adafruit blog. Geekmom Projects presents a stunning new wearable, a NeoPixel bracelet powered by an Adafruit Gemma M0 using CircuitPython. The electronics are cast in resin from a mold obtained on Amazon. Geekmom Projects writes, still experimenting with blending LED colors in semi-translucent resin, now trying the technique in wearables, of course. The cuff bracelet contains two side-emitting LED strips facing opposite directions. Check it out at Geekmom Projects Twitter. In this week's CircuitPython Deep Dive livestream, Scott streamed a recap of his work on ESP32-S2. Check out the latest video and past videos at adafru.it slash deepdive. Nina Zakarenko streamed the Python T community chat with guest Scott. They talked about electioncal.us, a tool for sharing voting information and more. View it at twitch.tv slash nnjaio. The CircuitPython plugin for the Atom Editor has been updated with some awesome new features. Check out a write-up at josephbanks.me or download the Language CircuitPython plugin for Atom to give it a try. Cedar Grove Studios posts the final repair of a damaged heirloom clock using the original acoustic whistles and chime. Sound components are activated by servos and a solenoid. It uses an Adafruit Cricut, Pi Badge, RTC Featherwing, and custom I2C host PCB from Oshpark. Coding is done with CircuitPython. 
video available at Cedar Grove YouTube. Look for an upcoming Adafruit learning system guide on using CircuitPython with large LED matrix displays for use as graphic signs. Video available on the Adafruit Twitter. Build a rotating platform controlled with an ESP32 running MicroPython in this video from Lamariva Tech on YouTube. Code is available on GitHub. Jensen posts to Twitter a version of a Tamagotchi using an Adafruit Metro M4 board with a connected LCD display. All logic and menu systems, text typing, etc. are custom coded in CircuitPython. Leo Fabi Tech posts to Twitter testing a robot using CircuitPython on a Metro M0 Express in preparation for a workshop. Win at Scrabble using a Raspberry Pi with a display and camera module in this Python tutorial from DevScover Coding and Raspberry Pi on YouTube. The Python dev posts to Twitter a print-your-own-adventure game with a thermal printer, Raspberry Pi, arcade buttons, and circuit Python. In another episode of Microcontrollers with Kinger North, learn about using subroutines in circuit Python and Arduino, available on YouTube. This is a rover able to deliver supplies to COVID-19 patients while minimizing infection risk. It uses a Raspberry Pi Zero in conjunction with a Belena Fin and a Pi camera. The Pi runs a web server via the Python library Flask, which serves a web page and allows for the rover to be remotely controlled, including the use of an Adafruit PCA9685 library. Details available on hackster.io. Learn about a LoRaWAN node using MicroPython in this post on hackster.io. Learn about Home Assistant, the Python IoT hub, from this write-up on lwn.net. Learn how to use an ESP32 MicroPython web server providing sensor data via a web page in this tutorial on howtoelectronics.com. Beautiful and easy plotting in Python, pandas plus bokeh. Learn how to use a single line of code to create an interactive plot from pandas data frame to bokeh in this article on towarddatascience.com. On the Real Python podcast this week, web scraping in Python, tools, techniques, and legality. Kimberly Fessel discusses her excellent tutorial created for PyCon 2020 online titled It's Officially Legal, So Let's Scrape the Web. Check it out at realpython.com slash podcasts. The number of CircuitPython supported microcontrollers in single board computers grows every week. There were six new boards added this week, including the Saula 1 with War Room and the Fluff M0. Are you interested in adding a new board to CircuitPython? Check out the Adafruit Learn System for a series of guides about getting your board added to CircuitPython and CircuitPython.org. There were five new Python on hardware related guides in the Adafruit Learn System this week, including Learn how to create your first tile map game with CircuitPython, including creating and modifying bitmap images for the game, in this guide from Tim C. Use the Itsy Bitsy and CircuitPython as a custom USB mechanical keypad with the Pimeroni Kibo, a 12 mechanical key switch USB HID keyboard controller designed to work with the Raspberry Pi in this guide from John Park. Build a simple guitar tuner using CircuitPython and the Adafruit Pi portal with a custom 3D printed case in this guide from Noah and Pedro and Liz Clark. The current number of CircuitPython libraries is 260. This includes both the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries and the CircuitPython community libraries. There's one new library this week, Adafruit CircuitPython SHTC3. There are also a number of updated libraries. As always, visit circuitpython.org libraries to download the latest Adafruit CircuitPython bundle. Included in this week's updates from the CircuitPython team, Dan finished the initial version of the Adafruit underscore Blinka underscore BLEIO library, which lets you use CircuitPython BLE code on host computers like the rest of the Blinka library. The same program that runs on CircuitPython on our BLE-capable boards now runs without change on Linux and Windows. He's testing with a heart rate monitor, barbecue thermometer, a BLE light bulb, and other such devices. There are still some stumbling blocks for Mac OS, and there are some limitations in the current implementation of Bleak, the underlying library he's using, that prevent using Adafruit services. We're looking into overcoming these issues. Nevertheless, Bleak has worked out quite well so far, and it is impressive how it supports such disparate platforms with a single clean API. Jeff continues work on high-performance SD card interface on the Grand Central with SAMD51. This is how his improvised setup looks right now. The overall structure of the code is in place, but it doesn't work yet. The Grand Central board is trying to communicate with the card to retrieve the card ID, but nothing is received in return. Investigation continues, and the vital clue is sure to turn up soon. Melissa's been focusing on Display I.O. once again. She has been going through each of the displays and making sure they all work, as well as adding features such as basic backlight control and display rotation. This will be really useful for making use of the displays that are designed specifically for the Raspberry Pi and other boards with similar 40-pin connectors. 
FlaskCon is a community-driven Flask event being held July 4th and 5th. Flask is a micro-web framework written in Python. Call for Papers is currently open. Visit flaskcon.com for more information. EuroPython 2020 this year will be an online conference from July 23rd to 26th. Attending the conference days will require a ticket, and participating in the sprints will be free. Check out ep2020.europython.eu for details. PyCon AU has announced they are holding PyCon Line AU in August. Check out 2020.pycon.org.au for more information. PyCon India 2020 will be held online from October 3rd to 5th, 2020. A call for proposals is open now through 14th of August. Visit in.pycon.org 2020 for more details regarding the CFP and the conference. Translating CircuitPython is now easier than ever. Translations make the project more accessible to a broader range of folks. Adding and improving translations is a great way to get started contributing to the project. With the help of fellow open source project WebLate, we're making it even easier. You can create a new account just for WebLate or sign in using other sites such as GitHub, Google, or Facebook. If you write another language, visit adafru.it slash translate cp, sign in, and start translating. Looking for more Python on hardware all week? Join the Adafruit community on Discord and check out the Help with CircuitPython and CircuitPython channels. We're over 21,000 strong and continuing to grow. You'll find a supportive, positive community filled with like-minded folks. Join at adafru.it slash discord. And that is your Python on hardware news for this week. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter or tune in again next week.